Hi everyone, this is Kathy Cook from Whole Home and Body Health and I am a board certified holistic nutritionist as well as a certified building biology environmental consultant and certified electromagnetic radiation specialist. So today I wanted to do a review of my new meter, the Safe and Sound Pro 2 from Safe Living Technologies and I wanted to just give my thoughts on what I think about it. As a professional EMF consultant, I have some pretty expensive meters. I have these gigahertz solutions meters. Um, they look the same, but they have different ranges. These cost about, oh, with all of the different antennas and the accessories, which are important, $1,500 a piece maybe. Um, this one, the HF59B, goes from 27 megahertz to 2700 megahertz and the 59D goes from 2.4 gigahertz to 10 gigahertz. That's why I have two of them. Um, they're excellent. They can do all kinds of things um, that a regular meter can't do, like data logging. They have peak settings, peak hold, RMS, which is the root mean square, and um, all kinds of different things they can do. So those are my standard meters that I use on an assessment. However, this is what I found. In the past few weeks, I find myself reaching for this meter instead of my much more expensive meters because this thing is just so darn good. Uh, it comes in at about $385, uh, which for the quality and the sensitivity of this meter is pretty outstanding. Uh, I do have a 5% off coupon that I will leave in the link below if you're interested in um, checking out this meter. But I, I just can't believe um, how accurate it is because, you know, I, I definitely compare them with um, my gigahertz solutions meters. But one thing that's interesting that's important to note is that these meters have a little bit of um, a deficiency when it comes to 4G LTE frequencies. There's a little bit of math involved that we're supposed to do. So we get a reading and we're supposed to multiply that reading by... 5 to 10 uh, depending on the strength of the signal that we can hear through the meter uh, and the beauty of this meter is you don't have to do that they've already kind of taken care of that issue inside this meter and so I feel like um, sometimes the readings can be a little bit more accurate of course the sensitivity on these meters you know this Safe and Sound Pro 2 isn't going to quite be there and you know it can't do all of the things that these meters do like uh, you know an overnight data log uh, things like that but for the average person if you are really interested in this topic if EMFs are something that you're concerned about this radio frequency meter would be the one I get now I know a lot of people have the Acousticom uh, people have the Trifield meter the Cornet meter those are all great um, and you know the Cornet and the Trifield they're under 180 bucks. I mean, it's an, they're both excellent meters for the price and you get to measure electric fields and um, magnetic fields as well. But again, for the accuracy and sensitivity um, for radio frequencies, because this only measures radio frequencies, uh, it can't be beat. And I think it's an investment worth having because our exposure is only going to continue to get more and more right so we've got 5g coming down the pipeline 6g internet um 5g phones satellites which this meter probably doesn't pick up but um all kinds of stuff that we're only going to continue um to have more exposure so it's important to have a good meter that's you know accurate so this is an investment for i don't know the rest of your life maybe um and, and i think it's definitely worth it um, so this meter measures 200 megahertz to 8 gigahertz. That's quite a range. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't go down quite as low, you know, as this one goes down to 2700, 27 megahertz. So I'm going to pick up more on those meters. But, you know, the stuff that we're mostly worried about is really within this range of 200 megahertz to, to 800 gigahertz. Um, cell phone, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, 
you know, uh, smart speakers, our phones, um, it's cell towers, it's all within this range. Now, a lot of people are really worried about the 5G millimeter wave signals, and this meter will not pick up millimeter waves. That starts at about 26 gigahertz. Uh, but I personally am not too concerned about that because 5G works with 4G. Um, anywhere you've got a 5G signal, you're going to have a 4G signal with it because um, 5G has uh, a lot of latency, meaning that if I'm on a phone call and I walk into the other room, because those millimeter waves are easily blocked, then th that call is going to be dropped. So that's when 4G comes in and recovers that call so that I don't get as much uh, dropped calls. So that means that if we're trying to use this meter to measure 5G, whatever that means, there's many different definitions, we will know if there's a 4G signal around uh, because this meter will pick it up. So, you know, that's how we, we kind of use that as a surrogate for some of the signals that are in the uh, atmosphere in our homes, you know, wherever we're trying to measure. So, uh, the other great thing, many great things about this meter is the sound function. So, I guess I should turn the meter on, right? So I don't have any um, devices on in this home. I do hear the sound tells you what the source of the readings are. Um, I believe I can hear my neighbor's router just, just a little bit. And I've got some cell tower um, in the background. So these readings are actually a little bit higher than they normally are. My readings aren't usually nearly this high. Um, I'm, you know, the peak I've gotten is, or the max rather, 291 microwatts per square meter. And the peak is hovering around 100 to 120. Hmm. It's a little bit unusually high for me, so I'm going to have to investigate what's going on there. Um, but the sound function is great, and that was on medium, so I could turn it on high so you can hear that a little better. So that high-pitched squeal, that's cell tower. So, so that tells you that that little bit of a chopper sound, which you can kind of hear, that's a router. Uh, so that's what's going on in my environment here. And I think I'm probably, it gets a little bit louder. Uh, you know, it's deflecting a little bit off this metal and stone. That's why you can probably hear it a little bit when I move it back here. Um, and another beautiful thing is there's a high, medium, and low on the sound. So sometimes you don't want to bring attention um, to yourself, but you still want to hear it. So you can just kind of alter the sound. And you could put headphones in so you can listen to it and, um, again, not bring attention to yourself if you're out and about. You can also turn the sound off um, so you don't have any sound, but you're still getting the numbers. So I think those options are pretty fantastic. Um, so what do the, the readings measurements mean here? So you've got an average, a peak, and a max. And these are all great because the peak is basically kind of what's happening in real time, so to speak. So it's kind of telling me what measurements I'm getting so that you can see that it's fluctuating so rapidly. So, interesting that my numbers are a little bit lower now. They're hovering around 20 uh, microwatts per square meter, which is a little bit um, more uh, what I would expect. So, you know, maybe there was just somebody walking by with their phone. Uh, I don't know. Uh, a neighbor was on their cordless phone. Um, sounded like a router, but, um, you know, may maybe it was something else going on. Uh, then there's the max, and the max reading is the highest reading I've gotten since the meter has been on. Uh, that's also important because it tells us kind of the spikes that, that are important to note. Um, and I've got this little button down here so I can reset that max. So I just reset it and, well, I, it was down to 55, then it jumped up to 135. So that's important information for you to know. And then we've got the average. And um, the average, 
is kind of important. Uh, depends on who you are, but the average is just basically the number, the average of these frequencies over time. Now, this is something that the industry uses. Um, so if I was testing something, I don't know, for the industry, let's say for whatever reason, I would probably use the average and say, well, over the last 10 minutes uh, that I've been measuring, the average is only two microwatts per square meter. Well, that's way below safety guidelines, so there's nothing to be concerned about here. Now, the reason why they can do that is because these peak, these pulses, the radio frequency pulses, uh, the characteristics of the radio of the frequencies are that they're modulated and they pulsed and they pulse very, 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 very quickly. So even though I'm getting 50 to 100 microwatts per square meter on my peak, the average of those pulses, since they're so fast, is 2.3. So the industry will use that average over time to say, well, this is what you're getting. What they're not taking into account is that it's the pulsing and the modulation that is actually harmful to the body. So, you know, it's good to have that number on there so that you can, know, you, you know, you can see what's going on over time. Uh, but it's a little bit irrelevant for the layperson because it's the max and the peak that are really causing our symptoms, so that's what we want to be most aware about. Uh, let's see, so, you know, I oh, the other thing is it's got these LED lights on it, which I also think are helpful. So slight, moderate, high, and extreme. So if, if you're just starting out to learn about radio frequencies and how to measure them, and you don't really know what the numbers mean, no worries you can use these LED lights to see what range it's in. So right now I'm in the moderate range, and if I get a spike, it'll probably go high, and, and you know, usually there just went to low. So that helps you identify, you know, the number range of what's a, a good number to shoot for and, you know, what's too high. So a lot of awesome things about this meter like I said, I find that I'm using it on my assessments often. Of course, I do still use these guys, and I, I use them a little bit differently for more specific, nuanced work, um, like finding the source, uh, the directional source of a frequency or to data log or whatnot. But excellent meter. I highly recommend it. Um, the guys at Safe, and, or Safe Living Technologies are my personal colleagues, they're building biologists, they are uh, instructors of ours as well. Excellent company, a lot of integrity, very knowledgeable, and um, they make fantastic products. So that is it. If you have any questions about this, uh, please leave them below. I'm always happy to answer any questions that you have. And if you found this information helpful, please subscribe so I can continue to bring you these videos. And I guess that's it. We'll see you next time. Bye.